The presidential race in Arizona is still too early to call, but Biden is currently leading in a state that since 1952 has only gone for Democrats one single time. That was Bill Clinton in 1996. And it's not just the presidential race. Democrats could pick up a Senate seat there with Mark Kelly currently ahead of the incumbent Republican Martha McSally. Joining us now is former Arizona Governor Janet Napolitano. I'm happy to chat with you um, as all of these uh, very interesting results are coming in. So my first question is, you know, it's hard to overstate just how historic this shift in Arizona uh, would be. This is this is not Barry Goldwater's Arizona. Um, What is your reaction to the results as they're still coming in? Well, it's not the um, Arizona that uh, I was running in in uh, 1998, then in 2002, 2006. I was running as a Democrat uh, uh, and was able to win, but it was extraordinarily difficult. Arizona uh, really had the well-deserved reputation of being a deep red state, but uh, it has changed very rapidly. Uh, The population has grown. The demographics have changed. The Democrats themselves have gotten better organized. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I think um, are speaking um, better and more broadly to um, all the Arizona, uh, all Arizona people. And so uh, I, I think the results uh, last night were really the product of uh, a lot of years of, of hard work. It feels like this wasn't an overnight thing. Obviously, you've seen Arizona trending in this direction, um, but it doesn't flip until it flips. It's all it's purple until or red, it basically until it's not. Um, when when Arizona, um, you know, shifted last night, what we're seeing is that it's not just the presidential race. You're seeing uh, obviously Mark Kelly uh, beating Martha McSally, but to be clear, obviously she lost in 2018 and then was appointed. Um, so the state has had two times uh, to, to not vote for Martha McSally. Uh, but in, in terms of the House seats and, and Democrats could flip uh, the sixth district in Michigan, um, which would give them six of the state's nine seats. That is, seems to me that that's a seismic shift that's not only about Donald Trump. There's something else going on in Arizona. What do you think it is? Um, You know, um, I don't know, but I agree with you. It didn't happen overnight. It's been happening over time. Uh, Democrats have picked up a congressional district here, a congressional district there. Uh, They did extraordinarily well in the 2018 election, where they picked up the U.S. Senate seat, Kirsten Sinema winning, uh, um, and um, uh, they picked up Uh, the secretary of state, the superintendent of schools. Um, These are statewide office holders that previously had always been held by uh, Republicans. Uh, And, you know, a lot of the um, credit for that, I I think, does go to the changing demographics of the state. Um, People have this impression of Arizona as the home of uh, uh, lots of retirees, and to be sure, there are many retirees there, but it, uh, it is actually a very young state. Um, it, it ranks as one of the youngest states in terms of average age of population. Uh, um, the the uh, racial makeup of the state has changed, and I think that has some uh, impact. And the economy has changed. Uh, it used to be uh, all about... Um, uh, tourism with uh, some copper mining and a few uh, and real estate thrown in. Uh, but now it's it's home to a burgeoning high tech industry uh, and, and lots of economic growth on that score. So it's it's a whole potpourri of things. While we have you, uh, Governor, you served as DHS Secretary, Department of Homeland Security Secretary under President Obama. Um, Arizona is a border state. Border issues have been an ugly hallmark of the Trump presidency. Just two quick questions about that. Number one, how much of that drove voters away from Trump? And number two, the domestic extremism that we have seen on Trump's watch, that he has incited, a lot of that started in the Obama years. They couldn't handle the idea of a black president. And you were DHS chief when analysts were writing papers saying we should take this more seriously. Do you wish you guys had taken it more seriously before Donald Trump came along and, you know, lit even more matches and dropped them on the flames? Well, I think in terms of, you know, Arizona being a border state, um, I do think the immigration issue has been very salient there. And uh, uh, they've gone through a, a, a period of uh, really intense anti-immigrant um, 
uh, politics. Uh, uh, a, um, uh, Senate Bill 1070, which was a kind of a show your papers bill that was uh, uh, mostly invalidated by the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, you know, you had Sheriff Joe Arpaio in Maricopa County. Uh, and, and, you know, all of this kind of anti-immigration uh, rhetoric. Uh, and I do think that that um, uh, had the impact of driving many voters, not just Latino voters, but many voters uh, uh, to the Democratic uh, side. And in terms of the rise of right-wing extremism, uh, um, you know, we uh, we did a number of things during the Obama administration in terms of uh, trying to collect and distribute more intelligence about that and put a greater emphasis on that. Uh, um, but uh, that problem has continued to grow, and it's something we do need to confront as a nation. Absolutely. Arizona is one of the, the few key states where Joe Biden didn't underperform uh, with Latinx voters. NBC, New NBC News exit polls show he actually did slightly better uh, than Hillary Clinton did in, in Arizona in 2016. What do you think the lessons are from the results of last night? Obviously, Latinx voters are not a monolith. That is the phrase everybody's saying today. I think uh, Mehdi and I probably knew that pretty, pretty well. But in terms of where we go from here, how do we unpack the results and, and try to explain what we're seeing in terms of uh, where Latinx voters fall in the political spectrum? Yeah, so I think it's very clear it's 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 not a monolith. Um, uh, I think uh, when you look at what happened in Florida, for example, um, and how uh, the Cuban voters uh, voted and Venezuelan voters voted, um, they tended more Republican. Uh, there was something about Donald Trump's message that really uh, uh, resonated with them. Uh, uh, and there was something about the Democrats' message that clearly did not. We need to unpack that. We need to understand it better. We need to understand that, you know, we have Latinx voters in, in this country who whose families have been in this country for generations. Uh, and then we have some who are recent immigrants. Um, well, does that make a difference? I suspect it does. Um, uh, I think the economic opportunity message uh, is a very important one for uh, Latinx voters. I think it's an important one for all, but particularly for uh, Latinx voters. At least that was my experience. And uh, uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, you know, many Latinx voters, you know, that it's a complex population and they run the gamut from being very conservative on the values front to being very liberal. Yeah, definitely. Um, Janet Napolitano, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time and your insights.